Super Talk Mississippi Media Production. You're listening to Thunder and Lightning on Super Talk Mississippi. Covering Mississippi State sports like nobody else. With Sports Talk Mississippi's Brian Haydad and Robbie Falk of On3 Sports. Now get ready for Thunder and Lightning. This is Thunder and Lightning here on Super Talk Mississippi. Brian Haydad and Robbie Falk here with you on a Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us here at supertalk.fm or wherever it is that you get podcasts from. We appreciate you guys out there, our great listeners, especially our servicemen and women out there taking care of us. I want to thank our sponsors over at Strange Brew Coffee House and Churn and Spoon Ice Cream. Start your day the right way with a trip to the drive through over at Strange Brew Coffee House here in Starkville or at Brupolo over in Tupelo. Be a little weird, Robbie, if Brupolo was in Hoy. Ahoy! No, not Ahoy. Just Hoy. Yeah, no, it's it's Ahoy. But it's it is a hoy. It's hoy, hoy. No, it's it's a hoy. That, that's ah. it's, it's, it's one of several hoys. I'm sure. I don't know how many hoys they are. It might be the hoy. I don't know. It could be the hoy. Yeah. So all Wherever, the same, that would be a little weird. There you go. Wherever you are in our great state, you can enjoy Strange Brew Coffee each and every morning. It's just a click away at strangebrewcoffeehouse.com. Oh, okay. Well. We just got, just got some, I guess, got some information that'll be re- pertinent to us in, in just a little bit. Okay. Pip printing and signs. No sign this week. We don't have a press conference to talk about the sign. So we will get back on that Ooh. next week. This has been an, this has been an incredible Monday. It's enough to know I saw the sign. Anyway. There, that'll be their fix for the day. But yeah. I did have, glad we didn't have a press conference. Me. They were like, I love hearing Ace of Base every, every Tuesday. I was like, Seems. It sparks it sparks happiness in your soul. Yeah. 90s music Kindle always boy. I've said this many times. 90s music even the most depressing of it like yeah. Third Eye Blind just brings out so much joy. I hear you. I hear you. I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. Well, let's see if I can segue into that. If you want to bring out the joy of messaging to your customers, if you want people to know what the what your business is all about, if you want them to walk in the door of your business and say, wow, looks cool in here, Pip Printing and Signs is a, na- a name that you can trust and a number you need to call. Anything that you're looking for from a signage standpoint, from a marketing material standpoint, anything along those lines, Pip Printing and Signs has got a plan for you. You already spend money on printing if you own a business. That's just That's just part of the bills. Why not? Why are you wasting your money with not the best? If you don't use pit printing and signs, you're, you're missing out. And I'm, I'm just here to tell you that. Call my friend Cam Baker at 601-499-5216. Tell him you heard about him on Thunder and Lightning. And put your trust in pit printing and signs. When you need printing, call Pip Pip today. College Corner, collegecornerstore.com is the place to find the maroon and white merchandise that you are looking for. And you certainly are looking for it. You are looking to get new gear with the new logos. You can get it at College Corner. Two locations to serve you in the Jackson area. They're original by Fleet Feet. They're in Florida by the Half Shell. Or you can shop online at collegecornerstore.com. Restaurant Tyler is Starville's flagship restaurant for lunch, dinner, or Sunday brunch. The best meal in town is at Restaurant Tyler. When we're talking about lunch, we're talking about blue plates here in Starville, Mississippi. The, The conversation begins and ends with the good folks at Restaurant Tyler. Great selection of meats, veggies, and the best cornbread in town. If you want to grab a great lunch, the place to do it is at Restaurant Tyler. Priority One Bank, 16 locations to serve you throughout central Mississippi. Let PriorityOneBank.com be your guide and let them show you not only how, how they, you know, where they're located, but how they're going to help you manage your money, help you invest, and help you plan for the future. Now more than ever, it's so important to be able to talk to people about your money. When you have a question, you don't want to wait, you don't want to worry, you want to get answers, Priority One Bank is going to give you that opportunity. Let Priority One Bank make you their priority. All right. It is the bye week, which means we are into the bye week blitz. Now, we're doing it a little different this year because we got two of these. We got another one coming up in November. So my thought process, Robbie, was let's get hoops and we'll get soccer. And maybe maybe another one. I don't know. And then we'll, uh, we'll worry about baseball and softball after their fall practices have wrapped up. So we'll get them in November. I think, I think that's the best way to go. 
And I think that we'll start, obviously, with men's basketball because that is where the excitement is on the MSU campus right now. Um, I was in school here for the Final Four season. I remember you know, coming off of that Sweet 16, how much excitement there was. Similar, similar vibes. I'm not doing a feels like 96 campaign. We're not going to do that. But we will say. I stand behind Noah Mashburn. If love, he wants to do that, I'll I will stand behind. We got to, we got to, you know, let's, let's, let's take it one game at a time. We're going to be a little I'm all in. Geeky on that one. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that when the time comes. So that being said, earlier today, I got a chance to speak with my friend, my good, my good, close personal friend, Coach Chris Jans. Live from his office. We're going to put this video up on uh, on YouTube as well if you want to check it out. And you can see what, what I'm talking about at the beginning of, the, in, of the, uh, the interview with the nets that are behind him. Let's go down to my interview with Mississippi State head basketball coach, Chris Jans. We do it every year. We call it the bi-week blitz. When football's off, let's hit on the other sports. We got two of them this year, so we're splitting it up. But there has been so much anticipation for men's basketball this year at Mississippi State. I had to start with our friend Coach Chris Jans joining us uh, this this morning uh, live from his office here at a pair. You got a lot of nets back there. That's a, that's a lot of big wins, I assume. Uh, yeah, they're from uh, different uh, places and moments and games uh, from, from the past and something we started uh, years ago. And um, when, when we got here, uh, didn't know where we were going to put them, but um, – my wife did all the decorating, and that's where they found a home. There you go. I was I was thinking about year three, you know, maybe a decade ago. When you hired a new coach and you go into year three with him, at that point you start saying, okay, now we have real expectations of him because this, the roster should mostly be his players, and he's he's recruited three full classes. It's a different day and age, right, in terms of roster construction and all that. But does year three theory still apply here that this is where the expectations levels for you have to jump up a little bit? I've never thought about it that way. Um, I've never looked at it that way. You know, the expectations for us were year one. I mean, that's what we talked about when we got the job, when I did interviews, when I sat at the podium being introduced to um, the local media and the fans uh, for our press conferences that, you know, we're trying to win in year one. You know, I don't want to talk about, you know, having a three or four year plan. And fortunately, you know, it's worked out in terms of, you know, some success in, in making the NCAA tournament, which is always the ultimate goal. So uh, I would say that in year, year three, because of, what we've done thus far and we've talked to our team already about it multiple times that that's the baseline now you know that's not enough that's that's we've got to win multiple games in the NCAA tournament and, and go on uh, runs and that's always been the goal but um you know just just making the tournament certainly is everyone's goal or, or one of their goals each and every season and it d definitely is one of ours but that's just the baseline. And so I, I think you could probably argue, you know, what you said that, you know, your three expectations uh, maybe uh, are a little higher for any coach in year three of, of his uh, start of his tenure at a particular school. But um, in the day and age that we're living now, um, certainly it's different for each sport, depending on, you know, what they inherit. But for us, we felt really good about, you know, what we inherited and what we added to it and, and had a chance. So um, we get that the expectations are higher. You know, we welcome that. Um, and, and any pressure that, you know, would be given to us, is not going to be more than, you know, what we'll have internal. Your first two years at Mississippi State, you've played this stifling defensive style. That's something you've done your, your whole career. I don't think enough people realize that some of your New Mexico State teams love to fill it up from deep. You, you coached a couple of teams there that that were top 40 nationally shooting the three ball. Do you think this team at Mississippi State looks a little bit more like those teams did? Yeah, that's a pretty good take. Um, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, some people around here think – that you know we're stuck in. <laughs> I do my uh, research. A different era, uh, the way we lack in our uh, our makers. You know, everyone always talks about 
find some shooters coach. I heard that a lot after my first year, you know, you find some shooters coach and I'm like, I can find shooters on every corner, but finding makers is a whole nother conversation. And so we've been searching for makers, not for shooters. And we think we found some, you know, we think we've improved uh, dramatically uh, in our ability to stretch uh, the defense and space the floor and take some pressure off Josh Hubbard with the additions that we've made to our roster. And uh, it's one thing to do it in practice when, you know, nobody's watching. It'll be another to do it under the lights uh, with a different jersey on that some of these guys, particularly the portal kids, um, have done. But, um, yeah, we, we, we used to be a team that we're known for how many threes we would take, you know, the, the percentage of, of attempts that we take from three. And um, I think we're going to have a team that is going to be a lot different looking um, than we've had, you know, since we've arrived in terms of, you know, just the, the fives and the girth and the strength and the philosophy. Philosophy is is throwing the ball inside, you know, uh, as many times as we could. Not that we're not going to do some of that, but I think we'll be more of an outside in, you know, team than we have since we've arrived. When I look at the the, the guys you brought in from the portal and the way your roster looks, you know, I know the term positionless basketball kind of gets thrown around, and I don't know that everybody knows what that that term really means. But it feels like you're maybe a little guard heavy. We'll, we'll put it like that, just from me looking at your roster. Does this team have – can you construct it a traditional one through five, or are you going to play a little bit more – and I'll use the quotation fingers here – positionless this season? You know, uh, I love having a team where you can play big ball, traditional ball, and small ball. You know, and, and meaning it really has to do with your – threes and fours, to be honest with you. You know, do, do you got a four that can play a five? You know, do you got a five that can play a four? You know, do you got a three that can play a four? If you want to play all those styles, it really boils down to that. You always have enough ones and twos, you know, usually to, to fill those spots. But when you get into those, can you play a small ball lineup with, you know, a Cameron Matthews at the five? Can you play a big ball lineup with with a Cameron Matthews at the three and a Keyshawn Murphy at the four and then a, one of these newer fives at the five? Um, so I, I, I truly believe that, that we're going to have a lot of flexibility with the type of lineups that we're uh, going to have as options to be able to throw out there depending on, you know, if we want to control some tempo or get the other team to have to uh, decide to, you know, maybe sub and, and match up with us or the other way around. If we play a team that is traditionally playing a certain type of lineup, can we match that to give us the best chance to defend them or play offense against their defense or whatever the scenario is? So right now, but, you know, it, it sounds good in theory. Uh, it's easy to do when, when you're in practice and there's nothing on the line. Um, you know, hopefully it'll keep getting better and, and we'll figure our team out over the few next few weeks before – uh, we get into the game portion, but right now we feel really good about um, the options that we have in terms of our lineups. I, I don't know, you know, growing up here in the South, I, I'm used to seeing Alabama at number one or number two, but that's usually in football. And, and now I'm seeing it in, in basketball. And of course, the Auburn is going to be really good this year. The, the conference just looks really, really tough from top to bottom. Is this the toughest it's been, in your opinion, since you got here? Yeah, I would imagine uh, if you forecast it, it's got to be. Um, obviously, you got the two new additions with Oklahoma and Texas, and you know you mentioned you know some some teams that are, are bordering us that um, you know are, are on paper you know going to be projected to be you know number one, number two, like you said, and then top ten, and um, even the SEC and, and nationally has just gotten more respect year in and year out, and they've improved dramatically over the last, you know, five, seven years in terms of, you know, number of bids and and just the quality of teams that are in the league each and every year. Um, so it's exciting. I love it. I mean, I, I love being in, in this league. I love uh, being in a league that has so many good programs because at the end of the day, you know, talking about March Madness, you know, you want the opportunities. You know, you want the opportunities to play as many quad one and quad two games as you can. Um, you know, I, I don't look at it as oh man you know this is going to be hard like i look at it as is what a great opportunity each and every night to play quality teams and um you know every game means something 
you know, to these fan bases, to uh, the national folks. And we're playing on the biggest stage in the regular season that there is. And so uh, it's awesome to be a part of it. And, um, you know, I, I hope the league has a great non-conference, you know, portion. I hope everybody, you know, goes undefeated because then it just improves the numbers. And, and like I said, it gets you a better chance to have those opportunities that you need. All right. I asked this next question of your counterpart up in Oxford. And he gave me the most coach speaky answer I've ever gotten in my life. I'm hoping you won't do that because it's a really simple question. (laughs) Is it weird seeing John Calipari in red? Mm, Not really. Okay. Not really. Um, You know, I I don't know. I don't think about it that often, to be honest with you. Um, But I had a chance to talk to him, uh, you know, a few times on the road this summer and, um, it didn't, you know, it didn't do anything to me visually when, when I saw him, uh, I didn't think too much about that, but, um, yeah, my answer would be not really, um, yeah. you know, I, I haven't been in the league like you have, you've been following, yeah. you know, Kentucky and the SEC for a lot longer. So for you, you got here, yeah. it's gotta have been odd to see him wearing, you know, red instead of blue. It is but, very odd coach. Yeah. Like for me, that. you know, I'm, I'm still a newbie, I guess. I got, I got about two minutes of, we focus on only ourselves from Chris Beard that I just like. A yes or no would have sufficed there. I, I it would have been fine. So I appreciate your answer. I thought I think your answer was better there. Um, I don't like to do player comps a lot. I feel like they're unfair to the players sometimes. But when you have a unique player, I, I would like to get your thoughts on it. Is there a, a comp in your mind for Cam Matthews because the mm-hmm. skill set that he has and the fact that he's able to do so many things so well, he's unique. It, it, not only in college basketball, but I think of the NBA. I have a comp. I don't know how good it is. I think he's a less crazy Dennis Rodman. Yeah, I was going to um, maybe what went into my mind was um, Draymond Green. Yeah. Less crazy. Yeah, uh, again. Less technicals. Uh, <laughs> maybe not quite as skilled um, as Draymond, but, you know, neither one of them is known for their prolific shooting. Um I don't think he rebounds like like a Rodman. Uh, I wish he did. Um, I'm on him right now about his lack of rebounding, to be honest with you, in practice anyway, and he's responded uh, the way we need him to. But uh, he's a unique player, you know. Uh, if you're really paying attention to us, like as the year progressed last year, we had quite a big, big package for him as, as the lead guard. And, you know, if you – told anyone that around here that that would be the case two years ago, they'd have been like, you out of your mind? I mean, Cam Matthews ain't going to be running, you know, sets from the point guard spot. But as we got to learn his game and, and he's developed his skills, uh, you know, it, it, we like him out there like that. And I think it poses problems for the defense. But, you know, he's kind of got a point forward role at times for us. And I think you, you'll you hopefully even see more of that. Um, you know, heading into this year. So again, I, I never thought about it until just then you asked me that question. But you know, that that's to me more more like that kind of player. You got a lot of new faces from the transfer portal. Too many to, for us to just go through each and every one of them. So my question is this: of the guys, now that you're starting to see them in practice, you've seen them this off season. Who surprised you the most? Good question. That's two two good <sighs> questions. I've done. I'm, this is a good interview. Now listen, uh, I'm not saying that. The answer will be the person that, because I don't know, you know, the season unfolds like it does, um, that this person will have the huge, huge impact or the biggest impact. He may or he may not. But uh, in a positive way, Claudel Harris from Boston College has been a really nice surprise. But m- more in that when he started, when he got here, he wasn't, he was a little disinterested in the defensive side of the ball. Um, He just didn't, his motor didn't run as hard as, you know, we'd like our guys is to run. And he made a conscious change. Um, He basically jumped off the bridge, said, I'm all in. And now if you'd watch his practice, that thought of his motor not running wouldn't enter your mind because he's flying around and he's bought into it and he's become a two-way player. He averaged 13.7 in the ACC last year. He was a big scorer for Georgia Southern. He's always been a scorer, you know, his whole life. Um, And he's going to be able to score the ball for us too. But the cool thing is, is um, the surprise 
is how quickly and well he's adjusted to you know being a defensive person uh, having an identity with that and knowing how important it is um to, to us and to, to in our opinion to the game uh it's been fun to see him tra- trans uh transfer like that all right we've kind of buried the lead on this interview I'm not talking about josh hubbard to this point but a, a legit all-american candidate a guy who will be mentioned among the top players in college basketball this season had a tremendous freshman year What's the next level for Josh Hubbard this year? What does Act Two look like? Yeah, I don't think. And again, I, I'm not sure how much he cares um, in the big picture. I, I don't care that much, but I, I don't think he's getting the type of um, love or accolades that he deserves. To be honest with you, considering what he did last year as a true freshman in the SEC in the numbers that he put up and he was by far, you know, our, our leader uh, in a lot of categories, uh, especially the scoring category. And I don't believe he's getting the national recognition um, that he deserves. And um, hopefully that'll just fuel the fire. Not that he needs any, uh, he's such a hardworking kid and a focused kid, but um, you know, he's gotten better. You know, I coach Don Walker, our strength coach has done a tremendous job with all of our guys, but that's the first thing that sticks out is, I mean, he's a great athlete, obviously, but he's even a better athlete now than he was um, a year ago. And, you know, you can imagine a kid like that having all this experience now of going through a college season um, and knowing what lies ahead. Um, you know, he's in the thing probably that, that I haven't spoke on is just his willingness to, you know, find his voice and, and use his voice and become a leader of this year's basketball team as a sophomore. Um, he's been terrific that way. He's He's been leading our guys in practice. He's been helping our guys in practice. And, you know, a lot of guys want to do that, but they can't because they don't work hard enough and they don't do the right things all the time that they have the respect from everybody else. But he has that because he is one of our hardest workers. And so I'm encouraging him um, behind the scenes to take over more of, of that type of role. And uh, he's been awesome at it. So, I can't say enough about about that kid, and um, you know he's poised to have a heck of a, a sophomore campaign. We'll wrap it up with this. You know, it's it, it's impossible to make like bracket predictions in, in September, right? Because it's so dependent on the matchups, and you just don't ever know who you're going to play. But you've coached second weekend teams before. When you look at your roster, the way that it's made up, your team, the players that you have, do you have the makeup of a second weekend team? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You'd asked me that in the summer before we got into these full-fledged practices. And um, just being honest with you, like every late September, early October, I don't think we're very good. You know, you watch practice and you break it down and you're like, oh, my God, like we're not good at anything and we got so far to go. And I'm right in that space right now. Yeah. Like I don't think we can beat anybody today. Like I really don't. Now, if you'd asked me in June and July when – you know, we were hanging out and we had the catfish tour. You, you were a little bit more popular. Yeah. 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 Doing individuals and, you know, we got all these shiny new toys to yeah. work with. And we're That's a chance at that ball. point. Balls going through the basket. And, you know, we're not playing much defense or any of that matter. And uh, I've probably answered your question a little bit differently. But at the end of the day, um, We've got enough talent to to uh, you know be be as good as as we want to be, and we got a lot of work left to do. But um, all I'll say is I really like this basketball team. I like their energy. I like their vibe. Um, you know, and I'm excited the fact that we've still got 25 practices before we have to play our first game. So I would say that this team has a higher ceiling. Um, you know, than than the other two teams that we've had, um, at least how, how we feel on September 30th. Looking forward to the, to another great basketball season with you, Coach. Looking forward to covering it this year. Coach Chris Jans, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hail State. All right, thanks to Coach Jans. Appreciate his time. And, Robbie, I mean, this is a team, I think they have the right mix of returning players and new faces. You know, you can't you can't just go all portal. And in this day and age, you probably just can't go. I mean, it would be very rare to keep a team intact and 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 bring everybody back. I feel like this team has has a high ceiling. I agree with what Jans is saying there. I, and their non conference schedule, the way they state sets up these neutral site games, I think it's really smart. 
scheduling. You know, you you play these teams, you get to get get out and see your fans. You don't have to make them travel as much. You've got three of those in the state of Mississippi. But you get the the, the net bonus of playing a neutral site game against some, some decent teams. You've also got that game in Memphis. That will end up probably being a quad one or quad two game for Mississippi State, and they'll have a strong uh, crowd there, I would imagine. So a, a lot to like about this basketball team. If I had to, to make you know make you be the negative one, where, where what's your concern about this basketball team? It's a hundred percent in the post. Mm-hmm. You you lost no no matter what you think of Tolo Smith and you know he needed to do more late down the stretch. Completely understand that he was still an all conference center for you, a guy that you could post up, get the ball to. You could, you know, revolve your offense in a lot of ways around him. And also, he was a guy that could clean it up and, um, you know, get rebounds and put backs and things like that. There is no one just yet that you feel great about being a scorer in the post for you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, rebounding and, and defending is going to be a big part of that, too. Now, I, I feel a little bit better about the rebounding and defending with – uh Pamena and uh, Michael Nowoku that you have that you brought in on the transfer portal. I do feel good about that. And I also like what I'm hearing about Keyshawn Murphy, who I think can play, um, you know, that that four or five for you. So I, I think that the talent is there. We just haven't seen – it's kind of like, you know, what we were talking about with, you know, some of Mississippi State's players of – Mississippi State football's players this year in the offseason is like, you know, there's talent with some of these players, but we just haven't seen them do anything. That's kind of what I what I feel about this. At the same time, some of that I think is offset by the fact that you have loaded up with better players in the backcourt. You've brought in guys that have done it in the power five before that are capable of scoring uh, from three, three levels, basically. And um, Kugel and Claudel Harris and uh, those guys, I think that's that's going to offset things a little bit. You're going to be able to do some different things offensively that you haven't done in the first two years under Chris Jans. That's exciting. I, I like the I the, the center thing is more like of an like an int- intrigue thing. Like I think the more you get out of that group, the better this team can be. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's something like the difference in Mississippi State making the tournament or not. Like, I, I think yeah. they're going to be good enough in the post that, you know, they're going to be a pretty good basketball team. I think this offense is going to be much better. I The, the thing I really like about Chris Jans is I think a lot of people tried to paint him as a certain type of coach. Like, he was dead set on doing certain things. Mm-hmm. Defensive guy. He was going to do certain things on offense. His first three teams have all looked different. Yeah. They've all been a little bit different. There wasn't a Josh Hubbard type on that first team. Now, this team has probably three or four guys that are capable of lighting it up for you on any given night. And that totally changes the trajectory of uh, Mississippi State basketball because they haven't had the, those kind of threats at the three-point line. So I, I'm – Super excited to see what happens with this team because you know they're going to play defense, and I don't think that's changed at all. But now you got the ability to score um, in different ways from different players, and you're not just relying on Josh Hubbard. It's almost like you listened to the interview. And I know you haven't yet because I haven't published it. I, I have not listened to the interview. But I asked him about that. I talked about some of his teams at New Mexico State and, and how they were they, they, they shot a ton of threes. And we're much different offensively than 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 this team, his teams here have been. And he he was very excited to talk about. It. He's like, yeah, that's what I'd like to do. So, my my biggest concern with with this team is 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 maybe maybe I'm overthinking it, but you know the first few weeks of the season, especially every team's game plan is going to be do not let Hubbard beat you, do not mm-hmm. let Hubbard beat you. He is going to get he is going to get everybody's best shot, you know. Who are the other shooters? Are, are they are they going to find their their shooting rhythm early? Because they're going to have to. Because state is going to rely on Cleary, on on Harris, on uh, on Kugel early in the season. Because I know that everybody is going to. I mean, it, his name is just going to be circled at everybody they play. 
So, who, and I think that's, that's going to be the yeah. Go ahead. No, you Sorry. Are, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say I think that's going to be the revealing thing about Mississippi State this year is I still think people are sleeping on this team a little bit because they don't they haven't really done their research and they saw you know state lost some players out of the portal or. Um, they they had some graduations like Tolu Smith. They, they still are high on this team, but not to the extent that they could be. And I think they're they're not digging very deep because what what's going to probably happen is I, I agree with what you're saying. The first few games, teams are going to say we can't let Josh Hubbard beat us, mm-hmm. and Kanye Clary is going to go off, or Claudio Harris is going to go off, or Riley Kugel. Mm-hmm. I even think that um, Melendez is going to to be a threat for you mm. um, and and do some good things for you. And then we're not even talking about Cam Matthews right now. Right. I, there, There's so many pieces on this team. This could be a really, really exciting team to watch. And Chris Jans has built it at the guard position this year. It, You know, he focused on – I think what he wanted to do after year one was get better shooting the ball. He did that. And a lot of that had to do with Josh Hubbard. But they were better as a team, I think, shooting the ball. This year, he kind of sees – I think he's been really smart in that he sees where basketball is going and that the best teams are offensive right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, nobody's really talking about Virginia and what they do on the defensive side anymore. It's it's all about offense. And the defense – is a good base to have, but if you don't have a team that can get hot and get, can hit shots down the stretch of ball games, you're not going to win big games. It's just not going to happen. State doesn't beat the team that they beat last year if they can't knock down a shot and stop a run against Tennessee and and teams like that. And they hit some big shots against Ole Miss too. Yeah. So th- this team is going to be deeper and more talented than what Chris Jans has had, especially at the guard position, and we'll see what happens in the post. We absolutely will. Absolutely will. Thanks again to Coach Jans. I, I was not expecting to get almost 20 minutes with him uh, today, but I'm very appreciative uh, of his time. Also appreciative of this man's time, who's hosting a massive game. The new soccer rankings are out, Robbie. It looks like uh, a, it's going to be a top-five matchup between Mississippi, between Mississippi. State and uh, – and Arkansas this uh, week, this Thursday, uh, at what's what's the name of the place? What is the net? Is, is, is it just the MSU soccer field? I think it's just the MSU soccer stadium. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do something there. We gotta get that. Uh... Well, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. There's like, there's been basically no history at the school in soccer. They, I believe, they made their first NCAA tournament in 2018. Mm-hmm. So this is this is a place that you know just hasn't had. I mean, James Armstrong is literally doing things that have never been done before at Mississippi State. Correct. So let's go to that interview with James Armstrong right now. Always great to talk to him, uh, MSU soccer coach James Armstrong. I asked him a very pointed question to start this interview off. Let's see how he handles it. You know, we call it soccer. The English call it football. And so with that being said, as I speak now to Coach James Armstrong, Mississippi State women's soccer coach, but I have to ask, are you the best football coach on campus right now? (laughs) Uh, Best soccer coach on campus. I'll I'll, (laughs) I'll go with that one. We'll go with that then. This is a question. Yeah, this question feels like it's more of like a pro sports kind of question, but we'll, we'll ask anyway. When I say, "What's the mood inside the building right now?" Because you guys have got to be on a little bit of a high, as much as you can be, knowing what you have to face coming up. Yeah, that, that's a great question, Brian. Thankfully, um, you know, we we have a motto: never to be too high, never to be too low. And we've got a really experienced group of girls that obviously have high aspirations and high expectations and and a lot of belief. Um, but they just truly take it one game at a time, you know, coming off some big wins recently, you know, the whole hoopla around Oklahoma and Texas was getting old. And so, you know, getting them out of the way early and beating both of them what was very important. And then we had the difficulty of going to South Carolina and not playing the game. And a lot of people think that's an advantage because you get an extra day of rest, but it throws you off your routine. So, the girls have done an unbelievable job of, of just taking it day in, day, you know, day in, day out, 
focusing on winning the day and just trying to improve and, and don't look too far ahead. And, you know, we, we, they do a really good job of turning the page and knowing that we'll, we'll celebrate the, the victory on the day of. But the next day, unfortunately, the page has already been turned and the next opponent is, is you know, on the horizon. In American football, we have a saying that defense wins championships. Now, I don't know if that's still true or not because the, the game of college football and pro football has changed so much, and, and offense really may be what wins championships. In soccer, defense wins championships. That's something I really believe. Yeah. You've given up two goals this year, um, yeah. and they were both in the same game. So every other yeah. game you've been able to pitch a shutout. We'll just keep making uh, analogies with other sports here, Coach. Um, how can this team continue to be this strong at the back and and why are they so successful at defending hopefully we'll we'll continue to be to be as strong at the back um listen I, I, everybody knows i have an unbelievable coaching staff that put together a, ga- a great game plan um you know we obviously added coach drago saranich um you know in march he's a defense minded coach um nick zimmerman is is an incredible coach on both sides of the ball and cat stratton you know, is, is really learning from from those two and, and really growing in her trade. Um, so, you know, the belief, the the buy-in, um, that defense does win championships. And, and what a lot of people probably don't realize is soccer is a little bit different, right, in terms of we defend from the front. So everybody, all 11 players that are on the field at any given time, they're all responsible for that defensive effort. So, you know, where we set the line of confrontation, in other words, you know, where we want to to establish pressure on the ball, where we're trying to shape the ball, where our pressing pockets are to make, you know, we want to make play predictable. So then we have numbers around it. But um, incredible defensive performances so far. Um, you know, as we go into SEC play, you're coming across quality opposition and quality players, attacking players in particular in every game, you know. So we've already faced that. You know, Lexi Mismo from Texas is the number one attacking player in the country. You know, we, we limited her to one shot last night. LSU, uh, incredible attacking players, you know, scored goals, scored three goals against Oklahoma in the last game. We limited them to one shot as a team. So... It's a full team effort. Um, coaching staff done an unbelievable job. Really proud of of how we're defending right now, and and hopefully, yes, it will continue. That's that's the goal. And then you know, on the other side of that coin, how much confidence do your attackers play with, knowing that you know they they they're probably sound at the back. They're going to be okay back there. Does that give them a little bit more freedom in in the way they want to play, or or you know, or, or is it just a situation where? They know if they can get one goal in, they're probably going to be good. Absolutely. It gives them confidence, you know, to know what's behind them. And, and um, you know, our record so far of, of limiting quality opponents to a few shots is, 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 you know, something that the attacking players can say, OK, well, we just got to take our chances now. Um, but we've got some great attacking players. You know, funnily enough, before the start of the season, um, you know, the, the shape that we're playing is because we've got so many attacking options, um, you know, so we're exciting going forward as well. And, and I think the attacking players benefit from us winning the ball higher up the field a lot of times. And we call it our repress. You know, when we lose the ball, we kind of swarm and get lots of numbers around the ball to, to win it back uh, earlier than usual. Um, so our attacking players are definitely benefiting by getting more touches on the ball because of that defensive effort. Big matchup this week. I, I, I assume the polls will come out a little later, but at the last one I saw, Arkansas was ranked number two in the country. You're still in the top ten. You're, you're number nine. You'll probably go up as a result of your win uh, Sunday night. So this is a massive game. Maybe maybe the biggest women's soccer game in Mississippi State history going to be played uh, in Starkville on Thursday. What does that matchup look like? What what does Arkansas bring to the pitch, and, and how do you counter it? Yeah, I mean, like you said, the rankings will come out. I'd, I'd be shocked if Arkansas are not number one. Um, you know, when these new rankings come out. Arkansas has just had sustained success. They've won four out of the last five SEC championships. I think they've been to the last seven finals in the SEC tournament. Um, they're relentless, um, scoring goals. They've got 17 different goal scorers. Um, incredible depth uh, coming off the bench, particularly from an attacking standpoint. And what they do really well is they just make you uncomfortable. You know, they, they prey on mistakes. They're opportunistic. You know, sometimes you can make a mistake in, a, in your own penalty box and, you know, you can kind of get the, the clearance with the second player. 
if you miss the clearance, Arkansas player is going to be on the on that second ball and, and putting it in the back of the net. So we really have to be good in our details defensively. Um, we know it's going to be relentless pressure for 90 minutes. But at the same time, we've got to do a really good job of, of playing our game, right? We A lot of times when teams play Arkansas, you know, it just becomes a bit of a, a slugfest, a battle. Um, we're going to have to fight for sure, and that's what we do really, really well. But we've also got to make sure that we, when we get the ball, we show our quality and make them have to worry about us. So, you know, Arkansas special team, they'll be number one. I do think it's the biggest game in, in program history. Um, but for us, we've got to make sure that we are as sharp as we can be on both sides of the ball and, and, and make sure we focus a lot on ourselves as well. When you think about a game like this, you know, I, I mentioned your defensive record. Do you think this team can win a 3-2, a, a 4-3 kind of game? Yeah, I, I honestly do. I, I think this team, well, I, it's not I think, I know that this team believes that they're never out of it. Um, you know, they have a, a great sense of belief in one another. They love to fight. Um, they love to get after it and never get outworked. So, you know, regardless of what the score is in a game, I don't think that they ever think that they would be out of it. So if it comes down to a high scoring game, we've got the players that can score and most importantly, the belief that, that we can win any game that we play. When you think about what this program did a season ago and the historic run you had in the NCAA tournament, you know, it's great. And, and you know, you want to do things like that. But as a coach, you know that fans think, OK, well, what are you going to do now? Can you go further? So I ask you that question. Can your team go further? Is this a team that you feel like you can make a deeper run into the into the postseason than you did even a season ago? That's been the biggest challenge for us as a coaching staff and, and as a program. We, there's no doubt that we have the most talent that we've ever had. Um, you know, we've got the most depth we've ever had. Um, the, the, the camaraderie is, and the chemistry is closer than we've ever had. Now it comes down to it's impossible to say, is the bounce of the ball going to go your way? Are you going to get the correct decision? Um, the decision is going to go your way. Are you going to stay healthy? Um, so I can't say how many games we're going to win, but I can tell you we're all really, really enjoying this journey. Um, we're all hell-bent on making sure that we continue it for as long as possible. There's no reason why this team can't win a national championship. There's no reason why this team can't win an SEC championship. So those are our goals. That's our mission. That's what we work hard for day in, day out. Um, I've, I'm repeating myself, but the, the team's doing a really good job of, of handling expectations and I guess you could call it pressure. Um, in the old days, even maybe last season to a degree, I think people thought that the, the Mississippi State maybe were riding the crest of a wave that could fall at any given time. I don't think that's the case anymore. Nobody wants to play us, I can tell you that. Starkville's become a fortress for us. The fans have been unbelievable. It's a, a great atmosphere. Um, it's not the easiest place to get to for, for any of the SEC schools. So why not us? You know, I know that's a really big cliche, but that's, that's what we're saying in, inside our circle. And we're doing a good job of keeping it in-house. And, you know, we just look forward to each and every single day that we get to be with one another. And this is a special team with a special group of players and special staff. So um, anything could happen. Fortress is one of my favorite terms that the English use in terms of, of what they call their stadiums. I, I love it. Stanford Bridge was a fortress for a long yep. time there. I, I appreciate that. Last question, and it's going to be a, a little off the wall because I want to know the answer to it. Beans for breakfast. What's the deal? Did Riley Combs ask you to, to, to no, tell you to ask No, you no, that? no. I, I've, I've been wondering this for years. It's funny because Riley Combs, who's our star center back, um, texted me that same question over the summer. She said, do you guys really eat beans for breakfast? And I said, yes, of, of course. I, I don't understand why that's so strange. But, yeah, we uh, we went to England, obviously, on our international trip and Let's just say that I thought the breakfast was fantastic. It was a full English breakfast every morning with beans, bacon, sausage, black pudding, you name it. Needless to say, the girls uh, didn't really quite um, appreciate it as much as I did and certainly couldn't understand beans for breakfast. I, I, I'm, I'm with your team on this one. I'll just, I'll just be honest with you. So I'd run some <laughs> Premier League smack on you, but your team's not there this year. So I'm going to just yeah. my billion-dollar team. 
and uh, we'll go from there. Coach James Armstrong, thank you so much, man. Appreciate your time, as always. Thank you, sir. Hell State. All right, thanks to Coach Armstrong uh, for that. I, I, he said he thinks Arkansas. I can't find the new rankings anywhere. I'm trying to find them, but it appears Mississippi. They might not be out just yet. Well, they they moved eight. up to number five in RPI. Yeah, I, I found I, I got a text that said they moved up to number five. I thought that would may have been the rankings. You might be right about RPI. He says he thinks Arkansas could be number one when they come here. So this is legit the biggest game in school history happening this Thursday uh, over at the soccer field. So. If you're in Star Tremendous Wars, test. definitely will be uh, be worth a uh, a look. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's move into our SEC picks, and that's brought to you by our good friends over at the Mississippi Beef Council, who want to remind you that beef, it is what's for dinner. And if you are thinking cooking out this week, nothing, nothing, nothing beats the sizzle of beef on the grill. That's right. Anything you're thinking about cooking, it's going to get enhanced by beef. So why not go for it? You know, maybe this is. And plus, by the way, I, I, I was going through some old tweets. I, I was looking for something, and somebody made a, a comment. You know, the weather outside it's 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 starting just a touch, just to cool off. We're getting into soup, stew, and chili weather very very soon. That's where beef is known to shine best. So if you're cooking out this weekend, remember you want to do it with beef. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Thanks to our friends at the Mississippi Beef Council. Two Brothers Smoked Meats on the heart of the co- in the heart of the Cotton District is the place to find the smoked southern soul food that you are looking for, and you certainly are looking for it. When you're in Starkville, Two Brothers is a must-do, and if you haven't been there yet, the older brother is a must-try. It is start- one of Starkville's newest restaurants. It's quickly becoming one of its most popular ones. You, you, you go there, and you see a lot of people, but you see a lot of happy people because of the fancy sandwiches coming out of that kitchen. So if you haven't been yet to the Older Brother, go check it out. I know you've been to Two Brothers, but go check it out again next time you are in Starkville. Great products, great service. Every business likes to promise it to you. They deliver it to you at Advantage Business Systems. That's what they've been doing now for 49 years. 49 years of taking care of their customers. 50 years. 50. 50. Of taking care of their customers and taking care of businesses just like yours. When you need technology, need a new copy or a new printer, something like that, you need to call Advantage Business Systems. Great name brands, great prices. And that's great. Anybody, but anybody can do that. It's what happens when you call them back and you say, hey, something, something's wrong. You know, it's been working great for a few years now, but now today we're, gonna, we're having a problem. No problem. Be there, be there shortly. Be there soon. Not a week to 10 days and not a 45-minute wait on that phone call either. That's the difference that Advantage Business Systems gives you. They're a Mississippi company just like you. 601-362-9192, or you can visit them online at absms.com. Find out how Advantage Business Systems will help your business do business. <clears throat> Before you go to the games, this weekend, any weekend, anytime you're in Starkville, if you need Mississippi State gear, you need to head over to Maroon & Co. Nobody's got a selection better than them. No one's got the stuff they've got on the shelves. They've got all the logos that you want. Everything you're looking for, Maroon & White, under one roof at Maroon & Co., and you can use our promo code to save you a little bit of money. Thunder15 is the code. 15% off regular price. Some exclusions do apply. And you can use that code in-store or online. When you need Mississippi State gear, whether you're in Starkville or not, the place to go is Maroon & Co. I embraced the hog last weekend, and it, it bit me. And as a result of Texas A&M's win over the Arkansas Razorbacks, Robbie and I are back square. Let's go! All right, let's see what happens this week. Obviously, you no- should never embrace the hog for more than one week. I, yeah, you, I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson. So let's That's get where congestive out. heart failure comes from. Trust me, I know. All right, here we go. Good matchups this week. There's not really. There's only one out of conference game, and it's 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 a good matchup. The only game I think we'll both agree on for sure is the new number one, Alabama. They are at Vanderbilt. I think we'll both take the Crimson Tide to win that one. Yeah, Vandy is still Vandy, and Alabama is still Alabama. Yeah, some things don't ever change. Deep South's oldest rivalry, Auburn at Georgia. Georgia has got to be stinging. they got to be mad and angry. I am quite positive that if Auburn could play Georgia 10 times, they would win nine of them, Robbie. But in this instance, I think Georgia's going to get that that elusive win. 
You know, I've joked about, you know, Hugh, Fre Hugh Freeze before the end of the year is going to blame every single person possible for their lack of success. He literally is doing that. He blamed the media today. The media is in, <clears throat> is in the middle of their, I forget the word he used, tailspin or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so he has now blamed his offensive coaches, his players, and now the media. So I don't know who's next, the people cooking their food. Uh, I don't know. But the I, at, at the end of the day, he's the head coach, and he's going to have somebody else to blame after this one because I think this is going to be a bloodbath. I'm in, I'm in agreement with you there. All right, well, Georgia's let's... probably quite ticked about what happened the other day. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that Auburn is buffering uh, the Alabama game before they play Mississippi State. Mm -hmm. uh, so State isn't the one that has to bear the wrath. Yeah. Th this is usually what happens to Mississippi State after Alabama loses. Yeah. Georgia can get it out of its system before they see Mississippi right. State. I like that. <laughs> All right, first game of the morning is very interesting. Missouri at Texas A&M. A&M is not an impressive team, but they're winning games. Missouri, also not overly impressive, but they are winning games. They are still undefeated. Winner of this game is going to feel really good about their chances the rest of the way to, to be a playoff contender. Loser of this game is going to have some questions to answer. I'll let you, I'll let you pick first. Yeah, this is a really interesting like fairly early season matchup. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of snuck up on me. I, I had forgotten Missouri and Texas A&M play. Mm -hmm. Not quite sure what to think about either one of these teams. Missouri was really unimpressive at Vandy, and that, that's kind of stuck with me a little bit. I, I'm going to go with Texas A&M in this game. Okay. Uh, I just – I feel like – Missouri's got some issues. Like I said, wasn't very impressive against Vanderbilt. You're going on the road. This is your first, like, real tough road game that you're playing. And um, yeah, I've lost a little bit of faith in Missouri. So let's see if they can get that get some of that faith back. But I'm going to go with A&M. All right, we're going to have a difference of opinion then because I just have not been impressed by A&M this year. Uh, you know, that Bowling Green was in the game with them. Arkansas had every opportunity. Uh, to win, they weren't able to do much with uh, with Notre Dame. Um, I, I just, I just don't, I just don't feel it with this A and M team. And Missouri, they've been better defensively than I thought they would be, and they have the best player on the field in Luther Burden. And I think he'll make a play that makes a difference. I will take the Tigers. So there's one for us to watch. Uh, let's see what else we got. Back to back here. games at home against teams with kind of a pulse and they didn't show up but yeah. they won the game they did win the game so maybe maybe that's what maybe they, they had the week off last week maybe they uh and they'll get their their act together we'll see all right tennessee is at arkansas i think we'll probably both take the volunteers here but i'll let you talk it out if you, if you got a disagreement with that yeah i just i don't, I don't think arkansas is consistent enough mm -hmm. to win games like this just yet I, i'm not ready to throw dirt on them or anything like that, but Tennessee has very few weaknesses. Arkansas still has several weaknesses, and they found ways to lose a couple of ball games that were there for the taking. So I, I just don't have faith they're going to beat a team like this. And Tennessee is my dark horse to win the SEC. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I think that they have everything it takes. Defense is good. The offensive scheme and the players in it are really good. Great coaching so far. The the program itself is just super healthy right now. This is a sneaky team for national championship contender and SEC title contender. Uh, I'm going to go with Tennessee to keep it rolling. I'm also going to go with Tennessee. I am going to pick Arkansas again this year. They are going to get somebody. I don't know who it is yet. I mean, let me look at their schedule. I mean, the I'm, offense is is too good not to. Yeah. They, you know, they have the bye week. Then they have LSU at home. That's that's doable. Could. That is, I'm saying Mississippi State. I wouldn't call that an upset, so we'll go to that. Ole Miss at home. Mm -hmm. at mm, that game's gotten a lot more A lot more intrigue, yeah. I don't know that they can win at Texas. Or they, they do host Texas. I don't know about that one. At Missouri, though, possibly. So I will pick them again, but not this week. I will take the, uh, the volunteers. They've probably done enough at this point. 
that I, th- I think they're going to keep Brett Bielema another year. Who? Not Brett Bielema. What am I? What am I saying? Sam Pittman. What year is? Thank it? you for the Both big guys. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I get, they all run together. I thought Billy Napier would lose his job a week ago if, if Florida had lost to Mississippi State. I think Billy Napier will lose his job this week if Florida loses to Central Florida. Central Florida, not as great as I thought they would be this year. I thought that Malzahn-KJ combo would be really, really good, but they got handled pretty easily by Colorado last week. Colorado though, might be better than Florida. I'll go first here. I'm going to take the Gators, but it is with a – Really bad taste in my mouth. I could easily see Central Florida winning this game. Yeah, th- this is kind of a crossroads type deal for Florida. I mean, if you don't win this game, I don't know what happens the rest of the way for you because that schedule gets a lot tougher. But UCF definitely looks more beatable than I thought after what happened uh, against Colorado. Mm-hmm. I think Florida wins this. I think they're just going to be too talented, and they've kind of gotten a little confidence in them after that Mississippi State game. They got it. They've had a week off. Yeah, I, I could see them winning this game. They probably have, you know, maybe one more game in them that's that looks really winnable at this mm-hmm. point. Um, but I, I think they can take this game. All right. So we'll both go with the Gators here. Now I'm going to put you to the test. Here it is. Here we go. Ole Miss at South Carolina. I want to pick South Carolina so bad. I, I'm, it's giving me the shakes. All right. I want to do it. I don't know that I can pull the trigger on it, though. I'm going to let you go first, and we'll see if you can talk me into something here. Well, since you're leaning on that, I, mean, I, I don't know if I can dig myself into a two-game hole if I lose both those games. Mm-hmm. I, I want to pick South Carolina, too, just because I thought Ole Miss was exposed last week, and this was my sleeper game for Ole Miss to lose. Yeah. I, I didn't even have Kentucky on my radar. South Carolina was my game that could potentially be a loss preseason because of the environment there and all that. Mm-hmm. And um, I still think that this game is super dangerous for Ole Miss. And if you lose this, man, I the snowball effect – that's coming if you lose this ball game is it could be really rough for Ole Miss because you got LSU on the road, you got Georgia coming up, and then it's Oklahoma over. Oklahoma looks tougher, Arkansas if, looks tougher. If you lose this game, it's over. There is no playoff. It's over. There, even if you beat Georgia, I don't know if you climb back in the playoff well, I mean, discussion. They're, they're not gonna. I, I mean, I just tell you, they're not gonna beat Georgia. They 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 can't lose again, and so here we are. So you're gonna take the Rebels. I, I'm. I, I'm going to take them to bounce back just because how often do we see South Carolina do this, you yeah. know, where they beat they beat Kentucky, they killed Kentucky at home. It's always like they get one I'm of those worried games. About, though, that are not worried about, but they killed Kentucky who then went and beat Ole Miss. And I know that transitive property doesn't really work in football, but when you, we're talking about the way they handled Kentucky so easily and the way that Kentucky was able to run the quarterback – and then Sellers, if he's back this week, and I think he is. Lenore uh, Sellers coming back is what changes the whole perception of this yeah. game. But Ashford can run, too. He can run the ball. He can, but Sellers, you need a guy that can do a little bit of both. You need yeah, to be able to do both. Yeah, Sellers, had he played against LSU, they run away in that game. So, if he's healthy, and South Carolina could very easily win this game. And then we're talking about... 2009 all over again. I'm, I can't. I can't pull the trigger. I can't pull the trigger just yet either. I, but I can't. I just feel like Ole Miss right. is going to bounce back. But all right. So we got one different. Missouri and Texas A&M is the game for us to watch this week. One of us will be up one game on uh, on Sunday morning. All right, guys. Uh, tomorrow's show is the rumblings. Go ahead and get your questions in. Also, tomorrow, uh, we will continue the bye week blitz. I'm going to talk with Coach Sam Purcell, Mississippi State women's basketball. Talk to him about his team and what's coming up this season. Looking forward to talking nice with Coach Sam Purcell uh, on tomorrow's show. Or I'll be, it will be for Wednesday's show. or No, it's a Thursday show. But you, you see what I'm getting at. You see what I'm th- doing here. All right. Robbie will fire off the tweet, and we'll be good to go. Guys, have a great Tuesday, and Robbie I will be back with you on Wednesday. 
For Robbie Falk, I'm Brian Haydad. Thanks for listening to Thunder and Lightning here on Super Talk Mississippi. Mississippi Media Production.